Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Early Mornings LLA, your Thursday edition. Qualcomm earnings are in, and while earnings beat the estimates of Wall Street, revenues miss. Meantime, our way of the highway? Joe Biden says he'll listen to other people's proposals, but he's only doing his way. Meantime, does Nancy cut the telephone line? In a chat about stimulus, she cuts someone else off that has nothing to do about stimulus. Then, teachers without, sec, va- teachers without vaccines? The debate heats up as the governor of California says something totally different than the CDC. Whose position are you on? Finally, the Golden Globes were announced yesterday. Big news and a historic day for women, especially in directing. What a great day it is. It's a Thursday morning. The toast is toast and the butter is buttering. I'm here, you're here, and this is Early Mornings LA Light. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's early morning to LA, the 6 a.m. edition. How are you? It's a good day, and currently Wall Street is trading in the early hours relatively quiet. The Dow futures and the Nasdaq futures were quiet overnight, trading less than 1% up. But other details hit as well. If you've not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. This is the most comprehensive financial news channel there is, recording 24 hours a day, seven days a week, from Wall Street to Main Street, from your home to my home, all the details and the most interactive online as you can find. So make sure you subscribe. Also like this video. And if you are not become a member, consider becoming a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. So much happening in this recording. And over there is an instant premiere. You can chat with your Purple Power buddies about what you think is going to go on today and tomorrow. And what do you think about the Super Bowl? (laughs) And with that, there's so much happening across the board this morning. Let's get to the breaking news. The breaking news is Wall Street was shocked by Qualcomm earnings report. Qualcomm came in after hours last night, and and while it beat on the earnings side, it missed badly on the revenue side, missing Wall Street's estimates. Yesterday, Amazon fell while Alphabet went up. That's after the news that Jeff Bezos is stepping down as CEO of Amazon. Turning to stimulus, our way or the highway? <laughs> Yesterday, Joe Biden continually said, I'm willing to listen to anything you gotta say. But when asked if he would change on the three, $1.9 trillion stimulus package number, no. When asked when he would change on the $1,400 stimulus check number, no. When asked when he would reduce the eligibility of the stimulus check, he said, no. So while he's willing to listen, <laughs> it appears that it's his way or the highway. The third stimulus package is effectively finalized at this point because all they need to do is just call a vote. The vote is anchored because of a situation that happened two days earlier. A reconciliation bill was passed in Congress, and that reconciliation bill now says that you can just call a vote for the $1.9 trillion stimulus package of Joe Biden, and you just need to have Democrats support it, and it's done. It's finalized. It's law. How soon is the big question. It's not a question of whether it's going to happen or will it happen. It's just what day. So you will be getting a $1,400 stimulus check, $2,800 a married couple, $1,400 children, adult dependents, $3,200. That's finalized at this point. FPUC will be January to September at $400 a week. Did Nancy cut the telephone lines? (laughs) More about that in a second. But wow, I mean, Qualcomm's earnings were a 2.17 a share versus 2.10, beating the estimates. Revenues, however, came in at 8.23 billion versus an estimated 8.27 they were expecting. So slightly lower. But Jared Bernstein, long time economic advisor to Joe Biden, spoke yesterday about the $1.9 trillion stimulus item and whether price tag and whether it is really his way or the highway. And Bernstein repeated much what I've been reporting over the last few days, which is Biden camp thinks that there's not much room for that number, that that number is about as low as it can 
be. He also talked about GDP, which dominated a CBO, Congressional Budget Report, earlier this week that said it expected the GDP in the United States to grow substantially this year. Bernstein said, who cares? That has nothing to do with the benchmarks upon which we determine stimulus. You can't judge our plan, our success, by looking at GDP, not even looking at the unemployment rate. Those things are necessary, but they're not sufficient. For far too many people, GDP growth is a spectator sport for decades on end. Our policies have to recreate other issues. There you go. And this is consistent with the reports that suggest that you could have, yes, multiple stimulus checks. Joe Biden could be back with other stimulus packages in the next few months because his camp is now saying 1.9 was probably on the cusp of being too small when it was written. And this may not be enough, as Joe Biden had promised, He'll be back with other stimulus packages if it's not sufficient. Next, did Nancy cut the telephone line? <laughs> no, she did not. But she certainly cut someone off when talking or not talking about stimulus yesterday. The wonderful 2020 Nancy is back. Yesterday, Joe Biden had telephone calls with his uh, with his caucus. He first had a his first conference call with the House Democrats, and then had one with the Senate Democrats. As to the House Democrats, he said, let's stick together. I have your back and you'll have mine. I'm not going to start breaking a promise to the American people when talking about stimulus checks. Then regarding the senators, uh, Chuck Schumer explained the meeting. He said, we want to do it bipartisan, but we must be strong. We cannot dawdle, delay, or dilute. And then came the House call. <laughs> I don't mean to someone's house, but I mean to the House Democrats. Right before Joe got on the phone, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee interrupted the conversation to ask about redistricting, says a report. Nancy Pelosi was not having that, and she immediately cut her off and said, Listen, we're here to pass the budget bill without com with complete unity. Stay on subject. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Next, the Golden Globes. And that's coming up later in this recording. But first, teaching without a vaccine. Wow, this really heated up news yesterday. Why? Boy, let me backtrack. Uh, Joe Biden had said that your third stimulus package is based upon two goals. One, reopening business, and two, reopening schools in 90 days. That goal was sought to be achieved by one benchmark. What's the benchmark? 100 million vaccinations of 100 million people in 100 days. Well, he can't make that benchmark because there's not enough doses. So the question is, then what? Well, that's why there's suggestions that Joe may be back with another stimulus package. But what about the teachers? Yesterday, start, well, two days ago, started with Gavin Newsom going on an actual YouTube video, no less, and being very vocal, says, we're not reopening California schools unless everyone's vaccinated. And that's after 10 months of California schools being closed. Dr. Fauci appeared on broadcast news a lot last night, but the night before, and he said that we won't be back to normal unless about 80% of the population is vaccinated. He said we're currently at 2% vaccination. So after Gavin Newsom, the Democrat at California's statement about schools, what did the Biden camp say? The Biden camp CDC director came out and said, I believe that schools are safe and that teachers should get back to in-class in classroom education right away because they do not have to be vaccinated to teach. That's absolutely contrary to what Gavin Newsom said. He said, I'm not putting my teachers at risk. They need to have access to the vaccine and be vaccinated before they return. So what do you think? Do you think teachers should resume in, pl in place dis discussions and teaching without vaccinations available to them? And what about children? Pfizer and Moderna say both vaccines are not available to children under a certain, uh, at that age bracket. So that would mean both the teachers would be in the schools and the children without the vaccine as well. Interesting. Now, how about the Golden Globes? Well, that was exciting. 
Yesterday, shortly before dawn, the Hollywood Foreign Press announced the latest, the 78th annual Golden Globe nominations. And boy, those awards will take place on February 28th, but everyone was already excited. Why? For a series of reasons. One, Mank, a film about Citizen Kane, written by Herman Mankiewicz, led with six nominations, the most of any film that year, this year. Uh, it was from Netflix, and that Netflix dominated the nominations across the board with 42. But the big surprise was in the director category. Three females were nominated for Best Director of a Motion Picture, the first time in U.S. history that more than one female was nominated in the same directorial directing category in a single year. And who are they? Regina King, nominated for One Night in Miami. Chloe Zhao, nominated for No Man Land. Emerald Fernell, nominated for Promising Young Woman. Meantime, David Finch was nominated for Mank, and then Aaron Sorkin for The Trial of the Chicago Seven. The nominations last night, yesterday announced, were Best TV Series, Comedy, Emily in Paris, The Flight Attendant, The Great, Shit's Creek, uh, Ted Lasso, and for Best TV Series Drama, The Crown, Lovecraft Country, The Mandalorian, and more. Wow, what an exciting day. The new day starts with continued focus on stimulus and Wall Street with earnings. Other nominations were as follows. Motion Picture, um, music or comedy nominations were Borat, subsequent movie film Hamilton, Music, Palm Springs, and The Prom. Also nominated in the prior category, which I missed for TV series drama, were Ozark and Ratchet. Finally, Best Motion Picture Drama, The Father, Mank, Nomad Lamb, Promising Young Woman, and The Trial of the Chicago Seven. What a great day it is. With all that, what's important to understand is that there's going to be a $1,400 stimulus check, $2,800 for a married couple, $1,400 for children, adult dependents, $3,200. The other provisions of the third stimulus package are all really quite exciting and very robust. They're detailed in the video right after that, so after this. So join me on the continuation of Early Mornings LA when I go through the items in the third stimulus package and the new surprise items that no one saw coming in there as well. Meantime, if you did not watch EIDL on Overnight's LA, catch that, FQC as well, and Hazard Pay, which debuted last night, our new hit show. Meantime, join me at 8.30 a.m. with the continuation of Early Mornings LA with Mornings LA. I'll be live on air and answering your incredible questions. Stay informed, stay focused. There's so much happening today. The important thing to understand is that this bill is a finality. All they do is have to set it for a vote, and then we're on our way. Stay informed, stay focused, keep on smiling, and save my life for morning.